Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. Watch this video. And I make a deal like this. Make a deal like this. Watch him. Make a deal like this. Make a deal like this, eh? What a man, them man. Only me could see what I go on in there. Eh? Go there. Watch her. Uh, you? Really? Really? You? Yeah, man. Gash here. You gash here. Oh, God. Um. Share the thief go to blood. Long time sit, but didn't just get caught. <laughs> so those goat thieves, they were held at Keeplef at Lucy in the parish of Anova. Now, if you are from Lucy or Dias or Middlesex or any of the areas nearby, Gashir should not be a stranger. To you even if you don't know him personally you should have heard the name before i don't know gashir atif i know gashir personally and gashir him atif people thinks from teenager days him supposed to be in his 50s by now and it look like gashir him not have no stop for stop <laughs> boy may i tell you so today i have an exclusive for you it's the motive behind the abduction of Kino and the female and the subsequent killing of Kino. It's coming up later in this video. Don't miss it. So, this first incident, it took place yesterday morning. We are told that members of the Latrice Camp Task Force, acting on intelligence, they carried out a raid at the Sigosa Limited Call Centre at the Freeport Shopping Centre in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. This operation was to target a female customer service representative. It is said that this female customer service representative, she was using customers' credit card and banking information to make purchases online. The female, she was accosted in the call centre and an on-site analysis was done on her cellular phone. It is alleged that photos of person's identity information as well as emails confirming purchases made were found on her phone. As a result, she was arrested and charged. Her name is Nakisha Wilson. She is 25 years old and she is living at York in Betteltown in the parish of Westmoreland. Nikisha, she has been charged for one, possession of identity information and two, possession of access device and she is currently in police custody. She'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next incident, the Bluefields police in Westmoreland, they have arrested and charged Horace Heawood. He is popularly known as Skiffa. Skiffa is 37 years old. He is living at Aldeer in the parish of Westmoreland. Skiffa, he has been charged for sexual offences. The allegations are that about midday, one day last week, a nine-year-old girl, she was on her way to school when Skiffa, who she knew before, grabbed her from behind and covered her mouth. It is further alleged that Skiffa, he then lift up the nine-year-old girl and carried her in a house where he put her on a bed. Skiffa, he then sexually assaulted this nine-year-old girl. And this sexual assault, he did not use his penis. He used his tongue. You got that? 
The nine-year-old girl, she was allowed to leave, but immediately she made a report. The police were informed and tongue rapable skiffer. He was picked up by the police. He has since been charged for grievous sexual tongue, I mean, grievous sexual assault. And skiffer, he'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next incident, it took place yesterday afternoon. Friday, June 9, about 3 o'clock. It took place at Whitehall in the Negril area of Westmoreland. The allegations are that the police, they were on patrol in the Whitehall area when they saw a group of men at a bar. The men, on seeing the police, it is said that they began acting in a suspicious manner. The police, they stopped and they went into the bar and searched the men. It is alleged that one of the men, his name is Ricardo Anasing. He is 28 years old and he's a golf course worker. He's living at Numperl Road in Westmoreland. The allegations are that Ricardo, he was searched and bingo. That black Smith & Wesson point four zero pistol affixed with a magazine containing 1.40 cartridge was taken from the front of his waistband. As a result, he was arrested and charged for possession of prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. So, he'll be going to the courts shortly. Westmoreland Police, job well done. In this next incident, we are learning that that man on your screen, he's known as Lance. He died as a result of a traffic accident last night and yesterday was Lance's birthday. He died along the Bullstrod Main Road in the Froome Police Area. Now, I'm gathering all the details and will be updating this story in a subsequent video. Stand by for that. This next story, well, this incident took place yesterday evening. Friday, June 9, about 6.30. It took place at Campbell's Lane in Mount Salem in the parish of St. James. We are learning that a man, he is known as Kemar. He's living in another area in Montego Bay. He was driving his grey Toyota Belta motor car along the Campbell's Lane Road. He was heading towards the Mount Salem main road. On reaching a section of the road, we are told that three hoodlums came out from an open lot. They were on foot. One of them was armed with an M16 rifle and another one was armed with a handgun. The man driving the car. He was in the process of passing them when they immediately opened gunfire at him. The man, he immediately put the vehicle into reverse and began reversing. The hoodlums, they continued firing shots at the man. As a result, the car he was driving collided into a blue 2008 Grand Vitara. The man, he managed to speed off towards the Mount Salem main road where he was assisted to a nearby hospital he had received a gunshot wound to his left leg we are told that the toyota belter that the man was driving received gunshot damage to the driver's window the driver's door the left front passenger door and the bonnet you want to know how lucky this man was we are told that when the police processed this crime scene eight nine millimeter spent shells and seven 5.56 pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. So that man, he went into the Mount Salem area and he almost lost his life. Well, we are learning that that man on your screen, he's popularly known as Trey. Trey lived at Crawford Street in Mount Salem and he worked at Wendy's in Montego Bay. The crime and violence in the Mount Salem area was affecting Trey, so he decided to move out of the area. He was having some serious issues when he left work in the nights and wanted to go home. So Trey, he left to live with relatives in the Coral Gardens area. Yesterday afternoon, Friday, June 9, about 4.30, residents of Providence Heights in St. James, they stumbled upon the body of a man. He was covered in blood. He was found in bushes in the vicinity of a garage. 
he was found lying on his back. He had a low-cut hairstyle. He's of a dark complexion. Stout built and is in his mid-30s. He was wearing a burgundy shirt. Blue shorts and black and white Nike slippers. A pair of glasses was found next to his body. The police were called and when they inspected the body, a small wound was seen towards the left back section of this man's head. The man, he had died some time before he was found. We are told that the man who was found was none other than Trey. Yeah man, the same Trey who was trying to escape the violence at Mount Salem. Now, as soon as I get more information, we'll be updating this story but the mayhem now in this next story we are learning that yesterday morning friday june 9 about 10 30 a white toyota probox motor car a taxi it was seen on glory avenue in the westgate hills area of montego bay two gunshots were then heard in the car the car careened off the left side of the roadway down a hillside Two hoodlums were then seen exiting the car via the back right door. The hoodlums, they then ran onto the roadway. They were then seen boarding a grey motor car which sped off. The police were informed and when they went and made checks, a taxi operator identified as Mr. Kianyut Roy Scott. He is 62 years old and he was living at Adelphi in the parish of St. James. He was found motionless and slumped in the driver's seat of the Toyota Probox. He still had on his seatbelt and he was in a pool of blood. He had gunshot wounds to his head and his left hand. From all indication, Mr. Scott, he died on the spot. Just like that. Hoodlums killed another hard-working Jamaican man. The mayhem. Now, there was another murder last night at Water Lily Crescent in the Narwood area of Montego Bay. A man popularly known as Makrat from Albion Lane, he was shot and killed. I'm gathering all the details and we'll be updating the story tomorrow. Stand by for it. The mayhem. The me- so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be the first to be notified. So yesterday, I told you that something was in a something. Read the incident at Central Village and Portmore. So here goes. That guy on your screen. His name is Delano Jason Brown. He's also known as Kino and Rapper. He's 22 years old and he lived at Portmore Villa in the Gregor Park area of St. Catherine. Kino is from Windsor Heights in St. Catherine. Kino, he used to be neighbor to a guy named Honda man. Kino also used to be neighbor to that guy on your screen. His name is Jordan, but he's popularly known as Chico. Listen this now. Chico, Honda man, and Kino. They are known hoodlums in the Windsor Heights area of St. Catherine. Got that? Honda man. He used to be involved with a female. She worked in a government department and she was living at Portmore. Honda man, he got into some trouble with the law and he was locked up by the police. Whilst Honda man was in jail, Kino, who did a pretty girl from a long time, he started dating her and eventually he moved in with her at Portmore Villa. Got it? So eventually, Honda man, he got bail and the moment he went back to Windsor Heights, he and Chico, they started planning on killing Kino because according to them, Kino missed the program by getting involved with 
Honda man's woman. We are told that Chico and his crew, they were a menace to the Windsor Heights area. They could be seen walking up and down with guns in their hands. We are told that on Monday morning of this week, about 11 o'clock, Chico and one of his cronies named Odin, they went to a church in the community and with guns in hands, they told the pastor that he will have to start paying extortion money. We are told that this act was carried out in front of several church members, some of whom would have known Chico and Odin from they were babies. We are told that when Chico and his crony left, other church members became aware of what took place. Now, <laughs> you ever hear the song? Don't you trouble Zion. You know the rest of it? Don't you trouble Zion. Well, apparently, Chico and Odin, they never knew it because after both of them left, we are told that other church members, they congregated on the church and then put on a piece of fasting and praying. If you didn't hear the story, I carried about how Jordan, also known as Chico and his crew, abducted both Kino and the female. There is the thumbnail on your screen. Go back and watch it. In that video, I had said that I didn't know what Kino was doing in Central Village. Now, we are learning that he's actually from Windsor Heights in the same Central Village area. So, Kino, he drove to Windsor Heights where he was abducted by Chico and his cronies. Don't you trouble Zion. Wednesday morning, Chico, he was killed by the police. That is after he and Hondaman and another crony had killed Kino. Yes, man. Hondaman, he was involved in the abduction. We are told that a taxi brought Hondaman home to Windsor Heights that Wednesday morning and he was all dirty and bloody don't you trouble zion we are told that another of chico's crony the same odin who went to the church he was shot and killed by the police along melva avenue in the same windsor heights area of central village last night friday june 9 at 9 30 pm we dropped a photo of Odin over on Patreon. The police are alleging that Odin, he was among three hoodlums who opened gunfire at them. The fire was returned and Odin, he was hit. The other two escaped. Odin, he was found clutching a 357 Magnum with one live round and one spent shell. He died on the spot. Don't you trouble Zion. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. With silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Joe. Come on. 
know the land of 